Hello, Booktube, and welcome back to the library tour of Doom. This is a library tour being conducted by Lord Ganesha and myself, where we take you through every single book in my library, one book at a time. Every bookshelf, every bookcase, one book at a time. And not just those, but also every book on my iPad. That's 6,000 more. Plus, every book in my book journal. Every book that I have had in the past, but no longer have. Uh, which is God knows how many thousands. This will take a long time. And today, our book aligns with a great booktube event that is slowly winding down, March Mystery Madness. I'm one of the co-hosts, so you'd never know it, <laughs> but I am this year one of the co-hosts for March Mystery Madness, where we, uh, myself and all our other co-hosts, are just rejoicing in all things murder mystery for the whole month of March, urging you to read up on some murder mysteries, maybe get some off your shelf that you've let sit there for a while, uh, there's been all sorts of great videos on favorites and types and rules and whatnot. It's just been terrific, absolutely terrific to watch. And I thought I might I might do a few of those for the Library Tour of Doom here in the end of the month. Uh, and although our book today is a big whopper. It's Lamentation by C.J. Sansom. Uh, this is a Matthew Shardlake novel, a big, big, heavy thing. This is a UK trade paperback. I just love it. It's so nice. Uh, the the stiff binding, the uh, colored map at the in the back there. Uh, and this takes place in 1546, when King Henry VIII is slowly but surely dying, and he is the, the pain and the humiliation of his dying is driving him insane. And factions are, are ramping up around the throne. They know that he is about to die, and he has a very young heir, a, very, a boy, uh, who is... Uh, strong-willed in the Tudor way, but impressionable and manipulable, at least until he comes of age. So factions at court are are strengthening. They're hardening all around, including out in the open in ways they would never have been able to do when Henry was uh, less occupied with his own physical illness. And the firestorm of those factions is Henry's final queen, Catherine Parr. who He uh, uh, married and trusted uh, liked talking with her, liked very much her calming, soothing ways, liked very much how she uh, made it her business to unite his family, his disparate children, uh, and to unite them not only with each other, but with him. She did to the best of her ability. She did that. She was a, uh, a formidable woman, a, a, an interesting character, my favorite of Henry's wives. And she is the, uh, the advisor and friend to Matthew Shardlake, the, the the investigator, the lawyer, who is the main investigator in uh, in this series. In in this book, he is a sergeant, and he is on her privy council. Uh, and he was a long time ago uh, a student of the ways and wiles of Thomas Cromwell. Um, and the 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 genesis of this book, the the kickoff point for this book, is that the Queen has written a book called *The Lamentation of a Sinner* in which she lays out a lot of her religious views. And she knows perfectly well that she's risking her life to do that because a lot of her religious views don't align with either Henry's or the, the religious rules that Henry has imposed on the country. And him learning about that would be very dangerous. He has, this, he has obviously a history of dealing with wives that he doesn't like. And Catherine knows that. But she can't help it. The, the portrait of her in this book is that is of a true believer in the very literal sense of the word. She has to write the book. And she keeps it hidden under lock and key, and it goes missing. And that's the thing that kicks off this, this mystery. She knows that she can trust Matthew Shardlake. He is an unconventional investigator, but, uh, but an honorable one. And she's had dealings with him before. So she asks him to figure out what happened to this book. Get your hands on it before... One of Henry's operatives, or God forbid, Henry himself, gets their hand on it. Uh, because it could mean her doom. It could mean a change in the nature of the whole of English society. He, Shardlake, takes up the, the case and uh, pursues it in the course of this book. And as you can tell from the size of this thing, I mean, this thing is four times bigger than the first Matthew Shardlake mystery that came out years before it. And that partly is because this author gets better and better at writing about Tudor England, but also, I, I would imagine, partly because of uh, the pleas of readers who wanted these things to be really big. They wanted them to be huge. The, the last four 
of the Shard Lake novels are huge. They're immense. I don't have them all in these UK trade paperbacks. I sometimes see them uh, and just turn them down because this is what I want. I want them in this format. I don't want them. I want them in these UK trade paperbacks. It's a silly thing, but that's what I want. I like reading them this way. Uh, and ebooks, of course. I have. I think I have the whole series on ebook. But uh, these are terrific. You're going to write a book this big, you bloody well better make it atmospheric. And they are. These are extremely atmospheric. Without being really boggy or digressive. I mean, you you follow Matthew Shardlake down a street, you're going to learn what that street was like. But not in a way that feels like Sansom is just dumping exposition. Uh, and it works. It works really well. It, these are tremendously enjoyable to read. The whole series is. And I'm not 100% sure that you... Uh, uh, that you you get anything really indispensable out of starting at number one. I, I, I recently reread this book from March Mystery Madness, and I was thinking the whole time, well, how much would I be missing if I hadn't read the, the earlier books? This is, uh, the action here is, at the beginning of the book, is echoing very soundly with the, the, the climax of the book before it, but that those echoes die out in 20 or 30 pages as the real mystery of this book takes takes hold. I don't, I don't know. You could start with the first one, but... Uh, any of these, I think, would, would be inviting to try. So those of you who like murder mysteries and who like historical murder mysteries and somehow haven't found this series, oh my, are you in for a treat. Are you in for a treat. I wonder if this book lists... Yeah, the, uh, the series starts off with dissolution, referring to the dissolution of the monasteries. These all take place in the reign of, uh, the, of Henry VIII. Then Dark Fire, then Sovereign, Revelation, and Hearthstone. And Sovereign, Revelation, and Hearthstone get progressively bigger. And then we have Lamentation, which is, the, I think, the biggest one of them all. Uh, but if you if those categories fit your taste, oh my, you're going to love this. <laughs> you're going to love this series, so give it a try. Uh, and that's it. That is your library tour of Doom for today, and also a little check-in with March Mystery Madness. Uh, and I'm going to wrap this up, uh, but I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, Book 2.